Earlier this week, Spencer and I had Tyler Algier in studio a week out from the NFL draft. A lot to discuss with him. Here's our conversation. Tyler, wonderful to have you with us in Studio B. As you uh, approach the NFL draft, I mean, we're, we're talking about your life changing in essentially a week's worth of time. What are your emotions like as you approach NFL draft week and the days that lead up to that? Yeah, I'll say more anxious than anything. More anxious, you know, try, just trying to see what team, what team ends up picking me up and just, uh, just doing what I do there. Okay, walk us through what you've been going through the last couple months as, as you've gotten ready. So season ends, and then you start training for the combine, right? Yeah. Where, where'd you go? What'd you do? Yeah, so I was training at Proactive up in Thousand Oaks, California. Trained there until combine and then trained there a little bit until pro day. And then after pro day, just been training here with our string stuff, just getting us right. The trip to Indianapolis certainly was uh, a big one and cool to be invited. How was that experience? Yeah, it was a grateful experience, you know, grateful and thankful, you know, just uh, being invited and just do my thing there. You know, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, a lot of sleeps is nice and all that. But just uh, it was more pressure to see what you do under the lights yeah. with everybody watching. But, you know, I thought they're pretty well there. So. Walk me through the moment before you run your 40 there. What's going through your mind when you know that the bright lights are on? But it's like – it just feels super quiet in there. Like, what's yeah. that like? Yeah, honestly, it was like everything's quiet. Like everyone's like, shh, shh, like just like so. Everything's everyone's waiting for you to run forty, and then like you look up in the screen, and they don't even show your time. So like everyone's looking up, seeing if they'll show your time, but you have no clue. You have no clue. So that's why you have to go to your phone and then see like <laughs> what, what you're actually doing. But I, they did a James Conner similarity. When they saw and then it said like four, six, some, then I was like, oh, shoot. So that's I, I kind of knew because they did the comparison, but yeah. no one else really kind of knows, I guess. Were you OK with the James Conner comparison? And how would you feel about four, six? Yeah, he was. Yeah. You know, James Conner, that's, that's a pretty good. good yeah, no, exactly. You know, I respect his game and four, six, you know, it was a four, six flat official. So, you know, I was I was good about it, especially with the way that I was at. But, you know, I, was, I felt fine about it. Debating on whether or not to run it at the pro day, but it was more of a business decision. Sure, sure. What, what went into that business decision? Um, shoot, just being fine with the four six flat, I would say. And you've been recorded faster, but you talked about at this weight. So what what uh, goes into that decision of like, well, I'm, you're a bigger back, right? Yeah. If you shed twenty pounds, hey, maybe you, you shed some time off that, right? Yeah, no, exactly. But you're a yeah. bigger back. Yeah, just a, a few extra added pounds, I guess. Shoot, who knows? Tyler Algier is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, it's, it's muscle weight, right? Yeah, oh, come on now. I, I, I like to think so, too. It's, it's muscle like, weight. You're like this. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn from not just the combine and pro day in terms of feedback? Like, what did experts, scouts, your agent tell you to focus on as you lead up to the draft after you heard the feedback from the pro day and from the combine? Yeah, I think mostly it was just uh, routes. Just route, route catching and all that, doing that in pro day, doing that in pro day, and then especially the combine, caught everything, combine, and then it dropped that one pass on pro day. But I was already doing a lot. Then they were just like, yeah, you, you've shown enough. Like, you're good. Like, you're good. So hopefully that put a lot of film showing that I can do. Like, I'm, I can be a three-down back, you know, I can pass protect. Obviously, I can run the ball and then possibly be a threat in the pass game. How nervous are you are in the are you in those situations? Because... Yes, you have all the film, and that's what matters most. But also, you want to prove yourself in person to these people. Yeah, me being grateful, shoot, I, I was able to kind of feel all that pressure during the combine. So, like, pro day, it was, like, pretty – I want to say it was easy, but, like, I got used to it yeah. because it was way more pressure at the combine. But, obviously, all these scouts are – there was, like, almost, like – 29 out of like 32 teams something like that up at the con or at, about pro day so like you still have to perform and like just having just feeling that pressure i was able to do pretty well clearly a lot of nfl teams are interested in you and your skill set and we hear a lot about the running back that had the most yards after contact since 2021 or whatever i mean uh, you are a physical back but which teams are showing the most interest in picking up a physical back like tyler algier Honestly, I couldn't. Really, I couldn't even really tell you. I've been talking to a lot of teams. Shoot, fantastic! The more, yeah. the merrier. No, I know. Shoot, yeah, it's been crazy. No, it's been a great experience. You know, talking to a lot of teams, just making to a lot of the relationships, especially with the running back coaches and stuff. You know, just kind of like just putting my name out there. Like, I made a couple connections. Like, it was like if even if we don't even draft you, like I'd love to, or like just like keep my number down. Whatever questions you have, like I think just those connections will go pretty vital into my future. 
depending on. I'm feeling excitement goes. for you right now. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm, feel, I'm feeling that right and, now. And we've seen what you've talked about play out before where teams will evaluate you, really like you, and maybe they're not the one that picks you. But later down the road, they'll be like, we really like this guy in the draft. We want to bring him to our team on that maybe second deal or whatever. That was yeah, a Kyle no, Van Noy exactly. situation. Right? right? Yes. Um, I want to say that uh, that happened with Taysom Hill at the Saints. Perhaps. There you go. So, yeah, this okay. is a very impressionable time, right? Yeah, I know um, exactly. Ha- has it been fun? Has, has this been a fun situation or is it or is it stressful? Some combination maybe. No, I'll say a little combination of it but no it's more fun like just enjoying the moment literally because this is probably the most funnest time you can ever have especially just going through this whole process feeling all this anxiety feeling all of this Mm -hmm. pressure and then end up actually performing well and just now it's just inter finishing interviews and only time will tell until where everyone or even me will go a few months ago i was staring at a picture of you and some family as you signed your preferred walk-on sheet to come to byu very low key and I'm thinking, what in the world is going on in Tyler Algier's mind in that moment compared to where you are now? So what, what did you tell yourself when you came to BYU as a largely under-the-radar guy, and now here you are? What, what was happening in those initial moments of, of you pursuing your career and, and the dream that was in your mind at that time? Honestly, humble beginnings, shoot. You know, my mom looked at me when we signed the thing. It was like, you sure you want to do this? Like, if you want to do it, we can fork out the money. We can do all of that. Like, as long as you give 110%, then, like, we'll do it. We'll do it. I just said, yeah. And then that's when I knew I'll just put my head down and get to work. You know, we, a lot of trials and tribulations came into that, but just making the most out of every opportunity that I had just got me to where I am now. What would you say to walk on Tyler Algier in that moment? Like, you now in your position, if you could give yourself advice five years ago, what would you say? Just keep trusting the process, I think. Yeah, just keep trusting the process and let everything, everything falls into place for a reason. At what point did you feel like, hey, I could actually make it to the NFL? Was it sometime in the 2020 mm. season? Honestly, I couldn't even tell you. I think, yeah, probably 2020 season. Once I got, like, solidified as the running back, earned my scholarship and all that, kind of, like, rose, rose in from bottom to kind of, like, yeah. just made a name or, like, just finally got the opportunity, I would say. Like, okay, now I can actually focus instead of just working my way up until – now I guess and then 2021 really validated what you did in 2020 because 2020 was awesome and then 21 it was like all right let's see it against seven power fives and you delivered man it was awesome no I appreciate that yeah Tyler Algier is on BYU Sports Nation I can think of a a pinpointed moment in 2020 when I thought yeah he could be an NFL back when you were running away from everybody (laughs) at Boise State and there wasn't like another player within the television screen it was pretty clear that uh some things were were developing for you um, what, what's the best advice you've received from Harvey Unga and some of the other teammates that have made the jump to the NFL and have been through what you're going through right now? Yeah, you know, they're all proud of me. They're all proud of me, proud of what, what I've became, what I've become and all that, you know, especially coming from like for to walk on to coming up, coming up and just taking the, or like taking the starting job and all that. But it was more, more just trust the process. Like keep trusting the process, you know, like this is the this is like the foundation like we we gave you the foundation now it's just perform to that next level getting the getting uh getting the playbook down like the faster you learn the playbook the faster you're on the field and that's exactly how it was in college obviously so in terms of fit and that's always the conversation with like okay for you to succeed at the next level it's got to be a great fit where they value what your skill set is is there a certain type of offense where you think you would fit best hmm now see i was I, I can I can tell you, yeah, no clue actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feels like BYU runs a similar offense to the Niners. Oh, like the wide, like the wide. Yeah, zone and like and all the that. Jets, okay. like do that right. Okay. Like, like is there a certain you know setup or or you know yep zone reads or whatever like. Yeah, um, I would say like some wide zone, mid zone, or but I I can personally excel in any offensive scheme that I'm putting. So I like that confidence. Yeah, yeah so yeah. what are, like whatever the team needs, like I'm able to perform and do it. Have you thought about potentially teaming up with uh, any number of uh, your former teammates that are now in the NFL? Because the idea of that is fun, but have you yeah. thought, have you given that much thought? I honestly haven't. I honestly haven't because, like, shoot, there's 32 teams. There's, what, like five five players in different locations, possibly? Yeah. There's Maybe. A, there's a bunch, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah, like, yeah. There's, like, five, ten, something well, like, like that. Like, what if the – Jets grabbed you or the Panthers and you're running behind mm. Brady or Zach's handing off to you or whatever. That's true. No, it'd be crazy. It'd be fun. No, it'd be fun. Cool. Be fun, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> um, do you, do you care? Obviously there's like more money, the higher up. Right. But like, 
Do you care uh, what round you're in or, you know, what, what team or what area of the country? Like, what do you value in this process of what team picks you? Yeah, honestly, just put getting that, getting that foot, in, foot in the door and then just putting my hand down like I did here and just getting to work. Really. What are you mentally preparing for on draft day? in terms of where you are expecting to get drafted, whether it's somewhere in the second or as late as the fifth, what are you preparing for? Shoot, middle, third, or towards the middle, like third, fourth, latest fifth is what I've been hearing. So, but, you know, you, you never know. You can you can end up having, like, good conversations with one team and then they pick you early or have a, have thinking they'll pick you early then picking picking you late. So you really you really never know. You can see all these like media outlets saying you're going to go here, you're going to go here, but you you really never know. And and sometimes a team that never even talked to you will pick you. That's no. the weird thing we've heard over exactly. the years. It's like, "What? You didn't even <laughs> we didn't even chat." Wasn't that that way for Brady Christensen? Kind of with the Panthers? I can't remember. Is that what it was? Yeah. Where they He's didn't like, it's chat the Panthers and his whole family was like, "What?" He said someone said Packers? He goes, "No, Panthers." Yeah, but Dude, the opportunity to play in the NFL. Um, at, at some point when you were little, was that the goal? Yeah. Like, when you started playing when you were young? No, yeah, shoot. Once, because I played, played when I was seven, took a break when I was eight, then, like, finally got back into it when I was nine, and then loved it ever since. You know, like, I want to strive for this. First, it was actually good. For, like, obviously, that's the goal, but at first was getting to college, getting it paid for, and then now my next goal was the NFL. And now after that, once I make it to the NFL, then just strive for more. Have you have you uh, gone back and thought about how amazing last year was? The most rushing yards in a single season in BYU history, like that was unbelievable, man. No, nah, thank you. No, nah, it was all all up to the O line, man. Yeah, they got me to where I was, to where I was. So the, all, the, all my success goes to them. You have Great to take them out. To yeah, din- dinner's on Tyler, right oh, after draft day. Oh, for sure. When a, I come back, best believe. Yeah, when you get a bigger check, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. How much uh, attention are you giving to what's coming back next year for BYU football? Because, I mean, these are all your former teammates. Speaking of the offensive line, they look really good. What do you think of what BYU is capable of from what you've seen in the upcoming season? Yeah, I believe they can do they can do not only better, but e- or even even better this year, especially with their schedule. Their schedule's tough. The schedule's tough here. It's almost, I would say, close to matching this year, but maybe a little tougher. I don't know. Sure, I don't know. I, I need to look. We've been re- debating as well. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But I think the offense has everyone back. Has everyone back? Chris Brooks is a great add-on. We got a, a lot of depth in the running back room to see who wins that starting job. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. You know, we have all the pieces on the offense now. It's just putting it all together and just balling out and doing what they do. You mentioned, uh, you know, like NFL Network or someone at the Combine compared you to James Conner. Do you have another comp or, or players that you like that you've patterned your game after hmm. in the NFL? Depends, past or present. Both. Either or, yeah. Both. Either or, yeah. So I always watched uh, Marshawn Lynch, Beast Mode right there. Oh, I love it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now on, you're talking Jerem Flanagan. Have you eaten Skittles before? Oh, no. I, can, I, can, I can't be eating candy before. That's, <laughs> see, see, that's During crazy. the game? Yeah. No, exactly. And then uh, currently is Nick Chubb for Cleveland Rounds. Nick yeah. Chubb. That's uh, a great one as well. No, yeah, he's a beast. Respect oh, his game as well. It wasn't too long ago that Jeremy and I were discussing the lack of skilled players from BYU in the NFL. That rhetoric has totally changed. Yes, it's very exciting to have. Tyson Williams, Jamal Williams, Zach, and Zach Dax Wilson, and, Dax yep. Milne. Like, there are so many like skill position players Jamal, in the NFL of course, now. Yep. Yeah, what, what do you think about all of that? Joining the ranks of even specifically the running backs, of being a third running back from BYU in the league along with Jamal Williams and Tyson Williams. Damn, you know, you know especially, especially Tyson, you know, especially playing with him as well. Yeah. You know, he put his head down, especially coming off his injury, and he put his head down and got to work. I respect his game so much because he – no, Tyson's a dog, and then Jamal as well. You know, Fontana, Nave, and all that. That's right. Keep in contact with those two guys as well. But, you know, it's just just an honor. Shoot, you know, a lot of, hard, like, hard work really pays off. And I think you just can't get comfortable. You just got to keep going. Shout out to Sione Takitaki from Fontana as well. Oh, and we yeah. forgot tight end Taysom Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever position he is. Whatever he is, yeah. He's the exactly. Taysom Hill position. Yeah, exactly. Let's just create the new position yeah. for him. That's Tyler, fast. congratulations on everything. Uh, we know how busy you are and, and what a crazy schedule you have in the upcoming week. But we thank you for hanging out with us. We know BYU fans are excited to hear from you. So thanks for the time. I appreciate you guys.